Toto Wolff has explained why Mercedes have been able to bring regular updates to their car despite a budget cap being in place. The cap was set at $140 million for the 2022 F1 season, and concerns were raised amongst the top teams earlier in the campaign about the struggles they could face in staying below this amount, particularly in light of a rise in inflation and increased freight costs. However, several outfits on the grid have continued to develop their cars on a frequent basis, leading Wolf to share an insight into how the Silver Arrows have managed this. Wolf has detailed the process that Mercedes follow in monitoring the cost of each technical development. I can speak for us, we have a tracker with the financial engineers that keeps track of every single process and every single component that is fitted to the single seaters, Wolf told the Italian edition of motorsport.com. So when we unload things from the truck, the financial engineer takes notes of the value and when it's used, it is counted. We are moving forward with the method we planned. At the beginning of the season, for many reasons, we didn't bring many upgrades. Now we are moving forward with the development program. On whether he has confidence in the FIA's control over whether teams adhere to the budget cap, Wolf emphasizes how any breaking of the rules would be similar in the same being done with technical matters. The regulation was already in place last year, and we will soon have the results that will confirm whether everyone has complied with the rules, the team boss explained. I simply believe that it is forbidden to make mistakes because breaking the financial regulations is like breaking the technical ones. F1 switched to ground effect cars as part of its radical technical regulations overhaul for 2022 has seen the return of vertical oscillating or porpoising on straights. The bouncing has caused problems for a number of teams, chiefly Mercedes, sparking calls for changes on safety grounds, which has led to a standoff for months between outfits over the issue. Having been previously discussed by the World Motorsport Committee, those changes have now been approved. As previously reported from the Belgian Grand Prix at the end of the month, the FIA will monitor the phenomenon and will introduce changes to the stiffness requirements of the underfloor plank and skids. And from 2023, the edges of the car floors will be raised by 15 millimeters, while the diffuser throat height will be raised and its edges stiffened. The FIA will also require an additional sensor to be run on the floor to monitor porpoising, while the governing body claims the floor changes will be implemented in a way that should avoid any impact on the team's designs of the mechanical components. Changes to the roll hoops on cars for next year will also be introduced as a direct result of Alfa Romeo driver Joe Guan Yu's massive accident at the British GP. Joe's car was flipped over following contact between George Russell and Pierre Gasly at the start of the Silverstone race, with the Chinese driver's Alfa Romeo sliding upside down until it vaulted the tyre barrier and landed in front of the catch fencing. After an investigation following the failure of Joe's roll hoop in the incident, the FIA has ratified changes for 2023. Changes will be required to the top of the roll hoop design, which is aimed at reducing the chances of it digging into the ground during a similar incident, as was the case with Joe's car. The minimum height for the point at which the homologation test is applied will also be made. While there will be no new homologation test to better test roll hoops against adverse loads, it is hoped that for 2024, the homologation test for roll hoops will be overhauled to further improve the safety of the part. The issues with porpoising appeared to affect Mercedes more than anyone else, and Lewis Hamilton was outspoken about the pain that he was in when driving. And now Lewis Hamilton and George Russell have been told they could face long-term back damage if their porpoising issues continue. Gemma Fisher, a human performance consultant osteopath working in Formula One, claims drivers could suffer disc damage if oscillations continue. Drivers also risk short-term damage, including muscle inflammation, nerve damage, and rib pains. Speaking to Express Sport, Fisher said, the short term is the mild levels of discomfort you can get from what's called facet irritation. Facets are the little joints within the spine, but the jarring of those, they are the pain-sensitive structures. They can become painful. They can refer and radiate pain out. Then, if you've got some low-grade level of inflammation that's happening around that joint surface, when you have a lot of it cumulatively in an area relative to normal, it's actually a chemical irritant to nerves. So inflammation can then start to give you referred pain and referred symptoms that start to affect the nerves that go further out to the extremities. 
fact, one of the other aspects from the up and down loading of the oscillations can lead to things like cervicogenic headaches, which means headaches that derive from the neck and spine. Fisher also warns drivers can get a stabbing pain due to rib damage, which can be very painful. Over a period of time, she also suggests drivers could suffer severe back damage due to microtrauma on the discs. She explained, The longer-term implications of what we are conscious of as medical professional with this porpoising is the impact it is having on the discs. The up and down forces actually are then putting increased pressure at the back portion of the discs, which then start to put pressure on where the nerves exit the spine and again cause that inflammation. That over time is a concern. It's the cumulative effect of that. Fisher explains that if drivers' bodies are then unable to fully recover between races due to the pack schedule. Mercedes has claimed its porpoising issues are now solved, but boss Toto Wolff has still welcomed new F1 rules to address the issues. With the FIA standing firm on their new directives to curb porpoising, Franz Tost says motorsport's governing body have reacted quite good to the problem. Under that technical directive, read a statement from motorsport's governing body, the FIA, will measure the phenomenon and expect teams to operate below a certain threshold in order for their car to be considered safe. Tost applauded the FIA for their intervention. From the regulation side, I think the FIA are doing a good job, the AlphaTauri team boss told G. Fans. It's not so easy when teams are using safety for regulation changes because of this bouncing and so on. The FIA reacted quite good. Now we have the metric, they came up with a technical directive. Teams now know exactly what the limits are. They have to stay within this. Now it's up to the teams to sort it out that the cars are not bouncing in a way that the drivers are not able to have everything under control. As of Spa, the FIA has also changed the rule to redefine the stiffness requirements of both the plank and the skids around the thickness measurement holes. This is being done to prevent teams from playing a grey area that has allowed them to flex the floor more than the allotted 2 mm. The FIA also announced changes for 2023 in light of porpoising when the floor edges will be raised by 15 mm. The diffuser throat height will be raised, while care has been taken to avoid any impact on the team's designs of the mechanical components, the diffuser edge stiffness will be increased. An additional sensor will be mandated to monitor the phenomenon more effectively. While the driver's health and safety has come first, always, porpoising is an issue the teams can, to some agree, resolve themselves. They just don't want to, as the simple solution to the problem is to raise the ride height of the car, but that means losing downforce and losing pace. It has been reported Mercedes, with Andrew Shovlin declaring porpoising, is no longer an issue with the W13, lost a bucket load of downforce eradicating the problem. Now the team need to regain that lost downforce while ensuring the bouncing does not return. Ironically, while the likes of Mercedes, and they are not the only ones, are complaining about the porpoising, with Christian Horner saying the solution is to raise the ride height, any car as of Spa that exceeds the FIA's limit on vertical oscillations will have to do just that, raise the ride height. The FIA are mandating a solution that the teams could have done themselves. They just did not want to. However, the long-term FIA intervention that has Horner and Ferrari clapping back is the decision to raise the floor edge by 15 millimeters. They are asking if it's fair of the FIA to step in and force all the teams to raise the floor edges when only some suffer with extreme bouncing and those teams can resolve that themselves by raising the car's ride height. The answer to that depends on whether you are a Red Bull, Ferrari or Mercedes fan.